All right. Hello. Welcome to the second class of the Strong Core series. Uh, thanks for joining. And I'll give you a heads up on the props that might be helpful today. I've got them lined up here behind me. Uh, if you have a blanket, that could be handy for uh, a bit of support around bony hips. And if you have a looped resistance band, that will give you some added oomph um, during some of our moves. If you have a, a light hand weight, I've got a five pounder here for myself and then a heavier weight. So I have a, um, a hand weight that's 20 pounds. We're gonna do some side, we're focusing on the side muscles of your core today, your obliques. Uh, and so we'll use that heavy weight to do some side stuff. It could be a bag of books, you know, if you don't have um, the fancy mancy weights, then find an alternative around you close by. Um, totally cool to make do. You can also practice it without the hand weight before and then practice it later for homework if you're into that. Um, and the, uh, and then just, I have another hand weight for myself, a, a small kettlebell, but the heavy hand weight that you have uh, will likely do, uh, we're gonna do a little bit of core work on the back with the, with the weight coming up and overhead. So I'm probably gonna use this instead, but that's kind of extra. Um, I'll put that over to the side. And then a small hand towel. You could use your blanket, but um, small hand towel will probably be just fine. Uh, so blanket, looped resistance band, heavyweight, lightweight, and a small hand towel. You're welcome to pause the recording if you're joining the recording. Uh, to I'm letting someone in here. Uh, you're welcome to pause the recording at any point and gather your props. All right. Cool. So I just went over um, the props that we're using today. Blanket. Whoop looped resistance band, heavy weight, light hand weight, small towel for a slider, or you could use that, oof, you could use that blanket as your slider, okay? And then this kettlebell here is just extra for myself today. All right, and as I mentioned, we're gonna focus on the side waist today, your obliques, some cool, cool muscles that help you rotate, to grab something at the other side of your desk or to pick up a grocery sack that's down on the ground um, or you know to lean over pick up your kid or your grandkid those muscles that help you rotate and also connect your ribs um, down towards your hips all right so of course we're going to start with some breath um, and you might notice the video, I have a, a webcam that I'm working with now, so it's on autofocus, so it might kind of take a moment sometimes to gather focus, so testing that out, so know that that's happening. Okay, laying down on your back, got another joining in, um, laying down on your back, and we'll focus on side breath. So come down to lay on your back. Bring your hands just to gently rest on your top rib so that the fingers are resting on the, hello, fingers are resting on the um, kind of low ribs and abdomen, abdomen, and then the base of your palm just wraps around to the side of your waist, side of your rib cage. And if that positioning is uncomfortable, you're totally welcome to let your arms hang out by the sides. So for today's focus, we're gonna be working on the side of the waist, side of your trunk. You can have your knees bend, feet to the floor. Soften down the eyes. Just let the rib cage, that top part of the rib cage, the sternum, just let that heavy a little bit, just soft and heavy. As you next exhale, that exhale breath might escape through the mouth.
And then on your following inhale, when you're ready, you can breathe into the rib cage, really gathering breath down into the low ribs, all the way down into the abdomen as well. Maybe feeling some of that movement underneath the hands if your hands are resting on the torso. And then as you exhale, slow and steady, exhale through the mouth as the ribs gather in and down. Breathing in at your own pacing, breathing in to fill into the whole circumference of your rib cage, top all the way down to bottom on expanding out into the sides too. And on your following exhale, breathing out, ribs gather down and in. And you might experiment at the end of this exhale with a slight pause, holding the breath out. Again, filling up, continue that. Inhaling 360. Exhaling, ribs gathering down and together. Maybe holding the breath out for a brief moment at the end of the exhale. One last round like that, breathing in, ribs expanding in all directions, whole circumference of your rib cage. Exhale, slow and steady through the mouth, ribs working their way towards the hips. Just the points, the ends of the ribs working their way to gather towards the spine, towards the hips. Then you can let the breath come back to a natural pacing. And you can set an intention for yourself, finding that focal point. Maybe it's a mantra, maybe it's a part of the body that needs some extra attention for you today. Just finding that focal point for yourself for the next 55 minutes or so. And if you don't have a focal point today, you're always welcome to use the breath. All right, take a cleansing breath in through the nose, perhaps. Sigh out through the mouth. <sighs> One more like that, breathing in through the nose. Sighing out. <sighs> Good, and start to lift the feet off the floor. The knees come up over the hips or so, and then the hands can come back behind the head. So you'll bring the fingertips to rest behind the head, or you can interlace the fingers at the base of the skull, either works. So take an inhale through your nose. And then as you exhale, start to rotate, bringing the left elbow towards your right knee and pull that right knee in. They might touch, they might not, that's okay. Inhale, come through center, knee goes back over hip. Exhale, right elbow to left knee, so opposite knee to opposite elbow. Exhaling, inhale through center, exhale, rotate. So a little bit of a bicycle here. If you'd like a little bit more of a challenge, then you can take, as you're rotating left, you can let that right leg reach long away from you. Inhale, center, exhale, opposite direction, reaching opposite leg long. Good. Oh yes, very good. You can increase the pace if you want a little bit more speed or you can keep it nice and slow, yeah? Listening to your body and responding as appropriate for you. Now on your inhales, you're still trying to bring in a lot of breath into the rib cage. And as you exhale, imagining those ribs, the ends of those rib bones gathering towards your spinal column. Awesome, on your next rotation towards the right, you're gonna pause there. So your right shoulder is probably towards the floor. The left shoulder is lifted as you're twisting towards that right side. And then take your left arm and cross it outside of your right leg. 
Good, keep that there and press the left arm into the right outer thigh. Awesome, press the right thigh out into the left outer arm. So you're creating this major um, contact between right leg and left arm. Breathe here. We're aiming to integrate some of our oblique muscles here in this rotation through an isometric movement. We're holding it for another two breaths. If moving feels better for you or you need to take a rest at any point, you can do that. Last breath here. Good, inhale, come through center. Pause for a moment, place the feet to the floor. Another breath in, exhale, rotate to the left. Right elbow towards left knee. Maybe reaching that right leg long and away from you. Pause here, find some breath. Stretch that right arm long and away on the outside of the left thigh. Panini press the right arm into the left thigh and the left thigh presses into right arm. Breath, there might be stuff to feel in the abdomen, side waist, hip, outer shoulder. Another two breaths, you got it, breathe in. Exhale, maybe lift a little bit higher, reaching those right fingertips further away towards the wall. Put another breath in, exhale, and then inhale, come through center, feet to the floor, arms stretch overhead, both legs long onto the floor, big inhale. And exhale, one more like that, breathing in and out. Good, go ahead and lift on up and we're going to come onto the side. Here's where you might want a little bit of padding for the hip. All right, let's start on the right hip. And you can have your right arm on the floor, right elbow. Good. And the left hip, the top hip, see if you can bring it to a uh, stack more or less over the right hip so that your left butt cheek isn't falling back to the floor. You're keeping it lifted. If you want, you could have the head lay down on the floor. That's totally fine if it's too much on that right forearm or shoulder. Take the left leg, the top leg, and lift it towards the ceiling. Cool, and then slowly lower it down. So a little bit of side hip here, just for a moment. One more leg lift and lower. Cool, and then keep that leg lifted. Yep, and then see if that bottom leg can hover off the floor any amount. Any amount bottom leg hovers. Yes, great. Maybe it comes up to meet the top leg. <sighs> That's rough. Or maybe it just hovers. Or maybe it rests on the floor. Breathe for a moment. Yeah, think about getting a little bit light through the shoulder, that right shoulder, so that your chest can lift up a little bit. You might feel some of those wrinkles happening in that left side of your shirt. Good, and then slowly release the legs down. This time we're gonna glue the legs together and see if they can lift as one, like a mermaid tail, all right? Lift both legs up any distance. <sighs> yeah, and then slowly release. Keeping that left hip stacked above the right hip. Legs lift, whoo, and release. One more lifter, <sighs> and lower. Okay, I lied, this is the last one, legs lift. Great, pause there, yeah, I know. Top arm lifts. Maybe your chest lifts up just an inch higher. This is like old school 1950s, one piece on the beach. Yeah, I'm, yeah there's a lot of like waves and, and like luau kind of vibes happening. Maybe that bottom arm kind of reaches out a little bit further away from you and you balance on forearm or palm and lift up another inch higher, legs lifter, last breath. <laughs> I see some fluttering happening. It's beautiful flare, yes, thank you. And then slowly release down. Ugh. Good, roll onto your back and for a moment, notice 
Any difference left side to right side on your side waist? One more breath, breathing wide into the ribs. Exhale. And roll over onto your other hip. Adapting any of the positions for your body and your needs at any point. So rolling onto the left hip, forearm on the floor if that feels all right. Good, and lift or loo that top leg. Awesome, slowly release down. And let's go about four more. Yeah, so upper body staying more stable. This work is coming more from that side hip. Good, and on that last leg lift, pausing, noticing if that bottom leg can hover any amount. Mm -hmm. This could be fun to do with the Pilates ball in between the ankles if you had something like that. One more breath, noticing if you can stack those hips. And then slowly release. Find that mermaid tail, legs come on together to hug in. And then both legs lift any amount. This side might be very different. Yeah, being open to what you experience there. Slowly release the legs down and continue lift up. During class, you might see that I'm glancing kind of over to my side. That's where I have my other screen so I can see y'all working. So if you see me moving my eyeballs, that's where I'm going. Mermaid lifter and lower. Last one, you're gonna lift and hold. This side might feel more strong or not as strong, or maybe it's even, who knows? That's for you to kind of suss out. All right, get light through that left shoulder, that bottom shoulder, and imagine that your mermaid tail is light. Lift that right arm up towards the ceiling. Maybe imagining like you've got a little string from the tail to your top fingertips. Good. You can do any kind of flutter that you'd like with arm or your imagination. And then maybe if you want, you can slide. You're feeling fancy in your balance. You can slide that left hand any amount away from your body and maybe lift up onto your palm, left palm, left hip grounded and everything else trying to lift. Last breath here. <laughs> and slowly release. Come down to lay on your back. Find another cycle of inhale and exhale. Great, bend the knees a little bit. Feet or heels to the floor. Arms reach along the sides of the hips. Breathe in. Exhale, curl the chin to chest, lifting the shoulders up, a slow roll up to seated. Oh, beautiful. All right, come on to hands and knees. Here's where you could use a small hand towel or you could use your big blanket. I'm gonna do a little bit of sliding. So a small hand towel, if you're on hardwood floor, I forgot to mention that part. If you're on carpet, you can use a plastic Tupperware lid or a carpet slider. Or if you don't have anything, you can experiment without. That's cool. All right, so hands and knees. You're gonna take the left leg out wide to the left. Yep. And then your, your right hand is gonna be on the sliding surface if you're using that. Right hand on sliding surface. And actually, you know, you're gonna bring the outside of your right hand to it so your palm is flipped towards the ceiling. That'll probably be a bit easier. You're gonna take the slider and start to reach it, thread the needle, reach it between the left wrist and the left foot. And you're gonna reach it all the way over towards your left side. Yeah, and your right shoulder is gonna come down towards the floor. You probably will have to bend your left elbow. 
Good. Then slowly make your way back up towards that starting position. Exhaling, thread the needle over towards the left side. So the chest is getting some rotation towards the left. Come through center, that could be your inhale. Exhale to thread. And we'll just do two more of those and I'll give you another cue for a bit more activation. Good, so on your next thread, you're gonna pause in the thread for a moment. And while you're paused in the threaded twist, you're gonna press down through the fingertip side of your hand. So the back of that right hand is pressing down firm into the floor so much that you might imagine that your left hand feels lighter, right? You're probably not gonna be able to take that, excuse me, your left hand. You're gonna imagine that your left hand feels lighter. It probably won't come off the floor that left hand, but you know, just feel a little bit of that right hand pressing into the floor, right shoulder muscles activating, maybe some of that rotational stuff from your trunk working a little bit tougher. Keep that intensity through the hand and start to glide it back through starting position. We'll just do one more of those. Slide left, pause, get a little bit more digging down through the left fingertips of that left hand. Oh, I'm getting my rights and lefts mixed up. Right fingertips press down. There it is. Left hand, oops, left hand gets light. All right, glide the hand through center. Right palm to the floor, left leg comes in. Press back to child's pose or plank or down dog, something that feels a little bit restful. You can let your intention filter back in. But, and then let's go on to the other side. Left hand to slider. Right leg out wide to the right. Left hand to slider, back of the hand to the slider. You're gonna slide it all the way to the right between right wrist and right toes. Press down to the outer right, louder left hand, and come back up through center. The reason that this right leg is out wide to the right is so you can have a little bit more room for rotation through the trunk. Awesome, and for the next two, you can just think about glancing up towards the ceiling. That might help to get a little bit more rotation using your eyes to guide you. And on this last one, you'll pause in the twist. Think about the right hand getting lighter as that left hand on the slider presses down into the basement. Good, keep that left hand pressing down as you pull it in slow. And we'll do one more of those when you're ready with your own timing. Glide reaching the left fingertips towards that wall. Right hand gets light. Oof. And glide in. Great, bring the right foot in, right knee comes in. Tabletop plank, child's pose, take three breaths, finding a position for your body. Yep. All right, make your way on up to stand. I've got to adjust my angle here. There we go. All right, how are y'all doing so far? You doing okay? Yeah. Okay. 
So if you're using a looped resistance band today, you're gonna grab that and we'll do a little bit of movement through lunge. If you don't have a looped resistance band, sorry, I'm working with some new technology today. So angles are a little funky. If you don't have a looped resistance band, then you could use a light hand weight or even a heavy hand weight as an alternative. I'll show both. Looped band, you're gonna put it underneath the right ball of your foot, your right foot, ball of the foot, and you're gonna hold on to it with the left hand. Okay, if you're not using a looped band, you'll hold on to the hand weight with your left hand. Left foot steps back. All right. You're gonna lean forward and kind of this rounded lunge, yeah? And then you're gonna lift up through the chest, lengthening through the spine. Good. And then keeping that left arm long, whether you're using the weight or the band, you're gonna turn your chest towards the left. Yeah, so it's just a little bit of a rotation. Cool. And then if you wanna add a little bit of an arm pull, you could pull that left elbow back a little bit of added tricep. Cool, slowly release down towards that rounded lunge and then pull to rotate chest towards the left. Yep, you could use hand weight, totally great alternative. Let's do three more of these. Awesome, keep going. Yep, chest rotating. Yeah, and if you have a hand weight, when you pull up and twist, you're welcome to bring it back, letting the elbow bend so you can get some, uh -huh, some extra, extra stuff through that back left shoulder for when you do some cacti gardening later or replant your jades whatever you might do later today. Last one. Cool, slowly release the weight or the band down. Step that back foot forward and come up to stand. I think that'll be better. Okay. All right, get a little bit of twist from side to side. Yeah. Good, then come back through center. Let's do the other side. Step the band underneath the left ball of your foot. Right foot goes back. Band in the right hand or hand weight in your right hand. Yeah, chest rounded forward a bit for this kind of slouchy lunge and then lengthen that spine long from head to tail and start to turn your chest towards the right. Good, then if you want, you can pull that right elbow back towards the wall behind you and then round forward and down. Good, pull up to lengthen, turn the chest. Maybe add in a little elbow pull and round and forward. Keep going. This additional pull is a great way to build that back shoulder strength and in particular also helps the rhomboid space, the space between your shoulder blades. Helps for some shoulder blade control and any kind of shoulder blade work helps to make the whole shoulder a bit more stable too. Last one, finding that rotation. And then coming back down, releasing the weight. Stepping the foot back, finding downward facing jog. Breathing into your rib cage, finding your intention for a moment and checking in to see how your body feels. Great, go ahead, tap down the knees, 
locate your looped resistance band. Bring the band back behind you and you're gonna scoot your feet through the band. If you don't have a band, that's okay. You can do this without. It would probably be really hard to do it with the yoga strap, so I wouldn't even try the yoga strap. So the band is gonna wrap around the feet and it's around the outer edges of the feet, both feet. Hands and knees, or excuse me, hands and toes. So we're in a plank position. So plank might be just enough. Yeah, you don't, maybe don't need the, the band. From plank, you're gonna push the floor away. So thinking about the back of your ribs rounding up a bit towards the floor or towards the ceiling. From here, pull the left knee towards the left elbow. Yep, and if you have the band around the feet, you'll feel some resistance there through that left hip. And then step those left toes back. Pull right knee towards right elbow. And step those right toes back. One more, left knee, left elbow. Keep a little bit of that round through the upper back. And then right knee, right elbow. And press back. Tap down the knees. Hips towards the heels. Child's pose, breathe into the back. Good, and then you can glance up for a moment. I'll demonstrate the next option. So from the plank position, rounding through the back, rather than sinking, rounding, really pushing the floor away. The knee, the right knee will come towards right elbow, and then we'll add on by bringing right elbow towards left elbow. And I'm gonna let my right hip, woof, rotate, my low back rotates, and we'll go for a couple rounds from side to side, elbow to elbow, Woo! and then press that back and switch sides. Okay, if that's too much, you can do the knee to elbow that we just did, or if you wanna do it in tabletop, that's totally great too. If your wrists are feeling heavy today, you can do this on forearms. All right, so find plank or your alternative. Cool, pull right knee to right elbow, yeah. And then cross over, yeah, let that right hip dip. Nice, and then left, left knee, you can switch sides. Yeah, we'll go side to side. <sighs> Breathing. Rounding the rib cage up into the shoulder blades towards the ceiling. For that knee to knee motion, see what it's like to bring the speed limit like down five miles per hour. You know, when you're going from left knee to right knee, see if you can slow it down just a touch to feel some of that low back, low belly twist. Yeah, yeah, to get some of that sense of hip rotating. Nice. And maybe one more if you choose, or you could be done with those because those can be a little icky sometimes. Great, if you've got the band around the feet, take that off. Make your way up to stand on both feet. And one weight that you'll need now is a heavier weight. So I've got a 20 pounder with me. Um, probably something over five pounds will probably give you a bit more of the feels. But again, if doing this without weight is enough for you today, then please stick with that. That's fine. Totally cool. So we're going to do some side, some pure side bending now. Great. And you're going to have your feet underneath your hips. 
Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate without the weight first. Arms hanging by the sides. Cool, start to side bend towards the left. You're making some wrinkles in that left shirt side. The left hand is just hanging along the side. And that left ear is coming towards the left heel. Awesome. When you get towards your deepest side bend, or you know the deepest that you wanna to go today, then you're gonna slowly, slowly come on back up. There might be a little bit of shake that happens along the way. And we'll just do a tester over to the right side, the opposite side. Slowly slinking down. Spine is getting some nice movement and lubrication along these sides of the bones and ligaments. Good, that right hand is dangling. I'm just letting my left arm just hang out along that left hip. I'm thinking about the right ear coming towards the right ankle. Good, see if you're breathing here. There might actually be more space to breathe along that top rib side. And slowly, slowly make your way on up. Cool, take a moment just to reset. Sometimes that kicks balance for a moment, you need to recalibrate. If you wanna add weight to that, then grab onto your weight in your right hand. And the weight is gonna hang out along the side of your leg the whole time for now. Great, and we'll start with a side bend towards that right side. You can think about creating those little wrinkles. And you're gonna go into maybe not as deep of a movement as before, maybe it's just as deep. You might feel now that there's some added weight, you might feel an extra stretch along this left side waist. Slowly press down through the feet and rise on up. Good, let's do that again. Side bend. Slow you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then come on back up. Yeah, sure, if you wanna add a little extra stretch when you get there with that top arm, totally great. So if you have more of a lighter hand weight in the hand, then you could do more repetitions. You know, if you wanna do this, uh, this class again later on in the week, you could do this particular exercise with a light hand weight for multiple repetitions. Or if you have something heavier, then maybe not as many repetitions. All depends on what you have. All right, come on up to stand for a moment. Bring that weight in front of your chest. You can hold it with both hands. Bend the knees a bit, find a bit of a squat. And then rise up tall. One more of those, bend the knees, hips go down and back. And then up you come. Let's switch hands over to the left side or weight switches to the left side. Good feet more or less underneath the hips. Big breath in. Exhale, side bend towards the left. Right now, when we move outside of class, our bodies don't normally move as, you know, particularly, meaning when you side bend, you, you normally don't do it in such a uh, precise fashion. So maybe at a later class, we can do some side bending with a little bit of extra um, movement. And what I mean, if you want to experiment right now, is you can side bend to the left, right? And then bring the chest a little bit towards the left foot. So you kind of slouch the chest forward and then you lift the chest. So it's a bit of a side bend and a twist. So that is, you know, something to play with if you want but I just mention it because a pure side bend, yes, is beneficial. And it's also related to our reality, but it's not the exact mirror image of our reality when we move every day. All right, but this will carry over for your everyday strength. 
no doubt. Last one, you can add in that side arm reach over stretch. And make your way on up. Weight comes down to the floor. Hands to the sides of the ribs. Breathe into your palms. See if those ribs can move out to the sides. One more breath, breathing into the side weights. Fantastic. All right, come to stand at the top of the mat. If you're working on a mat, stand towards the top of it. Have a, ooh, have a small hand weight towards the top of the mat. And make your way down towards plank for one last plank option today. On plank, you could have knees tapped down. That's totally cool. Hand weight, place it be behind the left wrist. I'm gonna demo with my knees down first. <laughs> All right, from here, actually I'm gonna widen my knees a little bit. You can widen your feet a little bit. So have a wider leg stance. You're gonna try and keep your spine long and stable here. And you're gonna lift your right hand off the floor to reach and grab the weight. Drag the weight over to the right side of your mat. Place it down. Right hand comes back to the mat underneath your shoulder. Lift left hand. Try and keep the spine nice and long. Grab the weight, drag it over to the left. A little bit of shoulder, a little bit of core. Left hand places down, keep going. You're gonna drag that weight over. from side to side. If this feels cool in the knees or on the knees, then lift the knees off the floor towards plank. If the light hand weight feels easy peasy, grab a heavier hand weight, try that out. And you might sense a little bit more work happening. All right, so I switched over to my 20 pounder. Ugh. And I can instantly sense more ugh, happening through my trunk. So from shoulders ugh, to hips. Today's class is about side waist and a little bit of rotation, yes? But here, we're keeping the spine strong and stable. It's an anti-rotation. So you're trying not to rotate the spine. Oh. Last one, left and right. Good, good. And then make your way on up to stand. Yeah, take any stretch you need along the way. Okay, roll your shoulders around when you come to stand. Take a breath. Soften the shoulders, lift all 10 toes, see if they can spread out. Yeah, and then relax those toes down. I'm aware you can't see my toes, that's okay. Lift all 10 toes up. Spread out the toes, like spreading out fingers and then plant all those toes down. And one more time, lift your toes and plant. Okay, from here, we're gonna do a triangle variation. So we'll do it without weight first and then we'll add on, spread the legs out wide. You can come onto the long end of your mat. Now let's turn the left toes out to the left. Great, and then shift the hips back towards that right foot. Let's start first with a long spine. So triangle pose is a lot about obliques that are keeping your spine from slumping towards the floor. You're gonna keep your spine long, maybe place your hands on your abdomen just to feel some stuff. 
and then reach that right arm up towards the ceiling. In a moment, we're gonna put a weight in this right hand. You're gonna reach that right arm up towards the ceiling, glancing up towards that right hand. Keeping your eyes on the right hand, you're gonna slowly lift the whole torso upright, coming to stand tall. Good, then slowly you're gonna shift the hips back, come back into triangle. And then lift on up. If you'd like to try this with the hand weight, grab your hand weight. And this is where I'm gonna use my little kettlebell. Okay, if your hand weight is too heavy, you can use your opposite hand to lift. So I've got my hand weight in my right hand. Left hand, you can use it to lift up. And then you're gonna try and stabilize it over the left shoulder. Pack that left shoulder down onto your back. Shift the hips back towards that right leg and slowly come down into your triangle pose. You can use your left hand for additional support on the left leg. Glancing up at the weight. You're gonna punch that weight up towards the ceiling as you slowly bring the hips underneath the chest. Upright, yeah, hips come underneath the chest and then hips shift back. <sighs> Glancing up at the weight as you bring that spine into a more parallel position with the floor. Punch the weight up towards the ceiling, hips shift underneath the rib cage to stand. Two more rounds, hips shift back triangle, packing that right shoulder down onto the back ribs, and then up you come, the last one. And upright, bend the right elbow, bring that weight down, and you can switch sides. Let's put the weight down for a moment and just check out triangle on the other side without weight. Okay, hip shift back, leaning long spine, head reaches towards the wall in front of those right toes. Maybe left arm reaches towards the ceiling, glancing towards the hand if that feels cool with your neck. Good. And then reaching up, hips shift underneath the trunk. Take your time. Cool, when you're ready, you can add on a hand weight into the left hand. If you're using a heavier hand weight, you can use your right hand to assist it up. I also bend my knees a little bit to get some momentum. Left shoulder, draw it down the back, giving a stable place for that left arm to hold the weight. Yeah, same region of this side waist, like those side bends that we did. If you wanna give a little bend to that right knee, see what that feels like. Last two. Feeling what you feel in your body. Noticing whatever's going on for your thoughts, sensations what have you. Coming upright, bringing that weight down, setting the weight down to the floor. You're welcome to stay standing. I'm just coming into the frame of the camera, but bring your hands around your waist. We're just gonna do four breaths here. You can stand, fingertips wrapping around the front ribs, thumbs wrapping around the back ribs, breathing into the fingertips and the thumbs. Two more breaths, widening on the inhale, and then sensing that gathering in like a deflating balloon. As you exhale, actually the, the respiratory diaphragm starts to gather up towards the heart as it comes into a more relaxed position. Inhale, it expands down and around. Last breath there. Good. 
Good. Last moment with weight. You're gonna get your heavier weight and then we'll do a stretch and a rest. You're gonna grab onto your heavy weight. Feet can be about hips distance. You don't have to, you can face any direction you want to. This is um, like a chair pose, uh, chair pose variation or a slight deadlift variation if you're familiar with the deadlift. So you're gonna hold the weight um, in both hands and set it between the feet, but it's a little bit in front of the toes. So it's like three inches in front of the toes. And, and you're gonna hold on to that weight with both hands and then stand up. Yeah, cool. Now from here, we're gonna bend the knees. Hips sit back really far, like, like you're trying to touch your booty towards that wall behind you. And we're gonna add a little rotation. So you're gonna take that weight and just tap it in front of the left toes. Yeah, just tapping it there and then stand up, straightening the legs, bring the weight through center. We'll go the opposite side. Knees bend, hips sit way, way back. Tap the weight in front of the right toes. Yep, and stand up. Cool, keep going. Hips go way, way back, knees bend, weight taps in front of left toes. And up you come. Hips trying to touch that wall behind you, tapping weight in front of right toes. And up through center. Good, as you do this tapping, you might notice that as you tap in front of the right toes, that your right hip and right booty are getting a little bit more work. And as you tap in front of left toes, your left hip left behind is getting a bit more work. Take about three more rounds, four more rounds, side to side. Yeah, yeah, you can let the, let the chest rotate a little bit as you do that, that, um, that tap. Yeah, nice. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So here we're just integrating some of that spinal rotation with some of the hip stuff. So a little, little extra hip moment for today. When you feel like you're about even on both sides with repetitions, then you can stop, put the weight down and come down to sit on your, on your tush. Okay, we'll finish up with a stretch and then we'll do a brief rest. For the stretch, if you wanna have um, some kind of band to help you, we'll do a, a Janu Shirshasana, so we'll do a figure four stretch. If you wanna have a band or yoga strap to assist, you're welcome to have that. So let's start with right leg long out in front or whatever side you're on is fine, we'll do both. Left knee bends, left foot in towards the inner edge of the right leg. And then we'll do a rotation here. So you're gonna turn that chest towards the left knee and then stretch that left arm up towards the ceiling. Uh-huh, and then maybe that right fingertips, those right fingertips reach towards the right toes, right foot. If you want, you can have the right hand grab for the foot or you could use a strap around the right foot. Turning that left chest towards the ceiling Remember, you can change the position in any way at any time for yourself. And inviting some breath, not only into that left side rib, not only that left side space, but also the right side where there's all those t-shirt wrinkles. Can you breathe into that, that compressed side of the right rib cage? So still attempting to have that wide round 360 breath. And slowly on the next inhale, come up through center. Left leg stretches out, right knee bends, switching sides. 
sitting up tall, turning the chest towards that right bent knee. Reaching right arm up towards the ceiling as you crawl those left fingertips towards the left foot. No worries if your hand doesn't reach where you want it to. If you want to increase flexibility, a great way to do that is to spend time in a position where you would like to eventually be. And a good amount of time to hold a stretch is roughly about 90 seconds to two minutes. We're under that today, but for your future reference, about 90 seconds to two minutes will give you some long-term effects for flexibility of the tissues. Turning that right rib cage towards the ceiling any amount, Breathing 360 into your rib cage. One more breath there. And coming up right through center when you're ready, stretching the legs out long, giving them a little shake if you want. Good. And then choosing how you would like to finish class. Would you like to lay down for a Shavasana like rest? Would you rather sit? in a meditative seat? Do you need any props for yourself? Get those nearby. Good, and for those of you that are more on a time schedule today, I'll just give you a time heads up. It's 12.59. I will guide you for about two or three minutes for rest today, so we'll be a little bit over the one o'clock hour, so just for your live time purposes there. But if you're not in a time rush at all today, then just chill, breathe, and here we go. So take your next exhale, and let it go with a big sigh through the mouth. Inhale just comes in naturally. And the next exhale, a bit of a sigh out. You can let your breath now be a little bit more natural. Taking your awareness down towards the feet, the ankles. See if you can soften anything around the feet and the ankles. Noticing around the knees. Any muscles around the shins or the thighs that could soften give way all the way up towards the hips. So the whole lower body Letting gravity do the work. Traveling your awareness now towards the shoulders, upper arms. Each exhale, an opportunity to heavy a bit. Letting that travel down through the elbows to the lower arms, the hands and wrists.
And then lastly, noticing around the jaw, the tongue, any muscles around the eyes that you might be able to consciously relax. Bringing your awareness now to rest for a moment with the exhale, watching your body breathe out. And noticing how you feel in your body here, any mood any sensation. You might let your intention filter in one more time. Or simply notice a full inhale and exhale. And you're welcome to stay here as long as you'd like, resting, integrating, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And for those of you tuning in to the recording, I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day or night. And feel free to reach out at any point um, to share or give feedback or questions that may have come up. Um, yeah, namaste. Enjoy the rest of your time. Thank, Thank you, you Maggie. Yeah.